All right, so black has some compensation for two pawns. B4. I mean, black could play queen takes queen, bishop f4, and take this with excellent drawing chances. Move it on up, move it on up. All right, white's still up two pawns. Good, good. So for some reason, f5 is the best move. And then knight f4. I mean, I could see that happening. That does open up the black king a lot. So that makes sense. But okay, white's up two pawns, so you should just win anyway. Knight e5 checks a blunder. You have to play f5 here. Then you're blocking the queen from any attack. f5 is like the only winning move. After knight e5 check, black is fine. Okay, that's a blunder. f5 is the only move that draws. That's funny. Now black's winning. Every move wins. That's one of them. That's funny that rook takes queen wins and then laying the guy queen. So he played here, which loses. So black is winning if he takes, 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 g7, then rook g3, double x clam. Threatening rook takes rook mate, and when the rook moves out of the way, I just take on g5. But you have to see rook, you have to see rook here to do that. Does rook g2 also win? I think so. Yeah, rook g2 also wins. So either move wins, but it's not easy to see. Then you're threatening mate and the g5 pawn. So yeah, knight e5 check was the losing move. And then in this position, rook takes queen wins. And black played queen here, which loses. Yeah, now black's king is no good. Okay, queen f5 is a blunder. Queen f6 is winning, because if black trades queens, white has 700 pass pawns queening. Now it's a draw again. Wow, there's there's two moves that draw. Or three moves. There's queen takes, rook c6, and my favorite move, rook g4. <laughs> rook g4 is funny, taking advantage of the back rank. That's a funny way to draw. All right, rook h8, now white's better again. Okay, now it's just to draw again. This is to draw an end game. Okay, and that's a blunder that loses. I mean, just any move draws. This move, like the rook is, is attacked, so black just has to make some random move. You could play rook here to get a perpetual. That would draw. Rook a4 draws, threatening rook here in mate. Rook g4 draws. Rook g4 is like what I would play in a tournament. Because if he takes the rook, I play rook h1 mate. I'm threatening rook takes rook. And I'm threatening the g-pawn. So rook g4 makes the most sense. Okay, this loses. Now g7. And now white's winning. Yeah, and this is just an easy win. So king takes e5 was the last losing move, I think. Well, okay, black resigned here. So that was the last losing move. But yeah, here like any move draws, except king takes e5. O only move that loses. But I like this one the best. Because that'll, that'll get rid of this pawn. And then it's just obviously drawn. My favorite line is rook here. And then every move draws, but I like this move the best. That's my favorite. And this is also a draw, because black's going to play rook takes rook, and then these pawns are all hanging. But this is my favorite drawing move, rook f8. But every every move draws, it says. Rook takes g1 draws, because we're compositing just to draw. So both sides could have won that game. In this position, black could have won by taking, taking, and then putting one of the rooks on the g line. 
And I assume this move draws. That move's a draw because then we just perpetual. In fact, this move loses because you check and play mate. So white has to play king a1 to draw. And this also draws. And then just check. So black could have drawn by taking the queen and doubling the rooks. And he could have won by taking this, taking this, and then putting rook g3 or rook g2. So this is a draw, and these moves win. And instead, black played the losing move, queen g8, and now white's winning again. And then in this position, queen f6 wins, and he played this, which is a draw. And then here, black blundered with king e5 when rook g4 draws and rook g8 and several other moves. And now white just wins and black resigned. So it wasn't the best game, but it was a 10-minute game. So at the end of the game, you know, there's both sides have no time. It's move 46. So I don't blame anybody for making mistakes. After rook c8 in the final position, I take the rook and then I queen. And that's an easy win. This rook c8 and I take the rook reminds me of my game with Dean Napolito from the Spice Cup in like 2009, 2010. Here, I'll show you the end of that game. I didn't even play in this event. Terrible. All right, let's do chess games. Yeah, so it was... It was 2010. That was like my worst tournament ever, but I still beat Gina Polito. Let's see, how do I paste? No. Okay, so this is my game with Ippolito. I have black. Okay, I want to show you the critical position. So in this position, I played rook e3, which the engine says is okay. Then he takes, I take, he checks, I take, he takes, I take. He plays queen d3 check. I play king g8. He plays b4. And here I blundered. I should play knight f8 to e6. And the engine says it's equal. But I played a5 because I thought when this position occurred from my exchange sack, I could play knight e5. And I forgot that his knight can take and defend his queen. So I got all flustered here. When he played b4, I was like, oh, I can't play guy here. So I got flustered and I played a5. And then I sacrificed a rook so I could get all these past pawns. This is funny. When the game ended, he said I was completely winning. And I told Onishuk and I showed him the game. He started laughing. He's like, completely winning? Like, this position is crazy. The engine says that I can still draw here. It doesn't like d4. Yeah, and this is the key position of the game. 
I've shown this on stream before, I think. Thanks, Dankel, for a watch thing. White has one move that wins here, and the only person I ever showed this to who got it was Nigel Short, because I told him only an engine could get it. So he was looking for engine moves. But Nigel figured out the only winning move. I don't think I can explain the only winning move to you because you guys are, you know, something. Yeah, it, it's Rook A1. You, that's probably what you meant. Rook A1 is the only winning move because I ha he has to stop me from attacking his Rook with tempo. And Rook B1 doesn't win because of Rook B6. And if he takes my Rook, I get, I get to make a Queen. But Rook A1 actually wins. Then he's threatening Rook takes Pawn. If I play E2, he plays here. If I play D2, he plays here. There's no other move that wins other than Rook A1. I mean, who's going to play that? But anyway, he played King F1. Now it's a draw because I have Rook B6. And this is a draw now. Okay, and the reason I'm showing this to you is because somebody asked me in the previous game what happens on Rook C8, and I said Rook takes C8 and Queen. This is, this is what he missed. So this is a draw in this position, and he made the only losing move. Played Rook F1, that loses. Every other Rook move is a draw. So if he moves his Rook anywhere else, I play Rook here, King here, Rook check, King back, draw. It's all, it's all, it's all a draw. Okay, but he played for the win. He blundered. In this position, he played Rook F1, which loses. Now I'm threatening here, which he saw. He was in time trouble. Check here, here, and he thought he was winning. What's funny is Rook E2 draws. Like if Rook takes Rook, King takes wins. But I took this Rook, and then I play E2, and then he resigned. So remember, after Rook here, you take that Rook, and then you play E2. He, like, didn't see Rook takes here because he was in time trouble. That was the only game I won in the tournament. He said, I was completely winning. But obviously, the game was a mess. And Rook A1 was the only move better than what he played. And he was in terrible time trouble when he lost. He was trying to get a GM norm. He was having a good tournament. And then he was winning this game. If he had won, he would have been really close to a GM norm. And that was the only game I won in the tournament, but I ruined his GM norm. So at least I did something good. So that reminded me here of taking this and then and then queening. Is you got to take the right rook if you want to win. Also, rook gf1 wins because the engine says so. Then I'm threatening rook takes rook and rook here. But that's the horse of a different color. Okay, last but not least, but definitely last. Uh, curious about inaccuracies, help me. Okay, I'm not sure what color the person who submitted the game was. Both players are a 1,000, played on chess.com. Uh, what's the time control? It doesn't say? It doesn't say what the time control is. So I don't know what the time control is. Also, I don't know who submitted the game. Oh, it was Iron Ick who submitted it. Iron Nick. I'm white. 500 bits. Okay, so white submitted the game and wants to know about inaccuracies. It was a 10-minute game? Okay. Both players are a little over 1,000. We have a Vienna. Okay, this is good. Queen F3 is a mistake. You should play Queen H5 here. That's the main move. And this is called the Frankenstein Dracula variation, which is funny because you would think I made that name up, but I didn't. This is called the Frankenstein Dracula variation. And then Queen E7 or Queen F6. This is all theory, and it's very sharp. Black, black plays Bishop E7. So black has a great game, but black's down material. This, there's a lot of games in this line. But they start with Queen H5. When I played black in this line, uh, I would play bishop e7 here. And then black ta white takes, black castles, black plays knight c6, and that's just equal. I didn't go into that crazy line. I actually won a game against a higher-rated player doing that. Playing The queen f3 is just a mistake. 
Then after knight f6, white's just a pawn down. Okay, so white's a pawn down for basically nothing. Now white's going to lose a piece. Knight e4 blunders a piece because of d5. Okay, and that's a blunder. Um, you should either play g takes, your opponent should, or take the knight. Either way wins a piece. This does not win a piece. So now black's up a pawn, still winning. Okay, e force crazy. This is the nicest center I've ever seen. So black should just develop his pieces, castle either way or not castle. Leave these pawns here. E4 severely weakens the pawn structure. Yeah, now, now white is okay. White's bishop is good. Pawn structure is no good. So this is fine for white. Yeah, instead of f3, like rookie one's better. Then play f3 after f5, so your rook is on this open line. But this is okay. This is still just slightly worse for white, because white's pawn down. Okay, these moves are good. These moves are good. White, black's just a pawn up, so black should win like at a Grandmaster game. These moves are all good. Now black can win material with knight d3 check, forking the king and rook. But he took that, which is also winning, but not as winning. Knight d3 check again. Okay, still winning. Whoa, rook d7. So, so black saw his pawn was attacked, but he forgot the knight was defending d7. So black should play rook c8 here with this big skewer and pin and so forth. And then black should win with his two pass pawns. But, okay, this is, loses his rook. So it's a blunder. Now the game's interesting. Okay, that move hangs everything. White's threatening rook check winning the knight. So black should play either knight f8 or knight e5 or rook g7. Something that stops rook h7 check. This move just hangs the knight. So now you're winning. Completely winning. And then it says rook c4, 1, 0. Okay, so both sides made a lot of inaccuracies. I don't know if black lost on time or black played rook c4, then resigned. Either way is acceptable. So there were a few blunders that game, but obviously rook d7, the d7 square was bad for him. The d7 square, he put his rook, and that lost his rook. Then you played here, and he lost his knight on d7. So d7 is a square he doesn't like. He hangs all his pieces on d7. So you, you stayed in the game uh, with, down material until he blundered everything. So that's good. So you did good. Or something. You, you didn't blunder too much. Okay, I, and most of you submitted games after the stream started. We don't look at those games. Also, the stream's ending, so we can't look at the games anyway. But you guys can submit for next week.